Hi, I'm Liz Schrunk for the Wisconsin Technology Council, here with WISBusiness.com, the show. Brought to you by Grant Thornton, Whitehurst Beck Dudek, Madison Gas and Electric, and the University of Wisconsin at Milwaukee. On today's show, Tom Still explains why one bad jobs report for Wisconsin isn't the end of the world. That's coming up in his commentary. Plus, Mike Wicker of Team Companies talks about the overlooked but essential business of data centers. I'll be right back with the WISBusiness.com stock report for early September. Please hold. Your call is very important. Does it to seem us. like getting technical advice from business advisors can, well, take some time? At Grant Thornton, client access to partners has made them one of the largest accounting firms in the country. Grant Thornton. Now, here's the WISBusiness.com stock report. Rising, Medical College of Wisconsin. The Milwaukee-based med school secures its largest ever grant from the National Institutes of Health. The $45 million will back large-scale clinical trials of a new procedure for bone marrow transplants. The trials aim to allow for successful transplants from donors with fewer protein matches than previously possible. That would provide more options for patients suffering from blood cancers. And falling, ethanol subsidies. Wisconsin's farm crops are flourishing, but agribusiness is worried about the outlook for the global economy and the corn-based biofuel ethanol. Wisconsin is on track to be eighth in the nation in corn production. Just recently, the USDA predicted a 9% increase in the use of corn to produce ethanol, but Congress is considering ending the tax credit, which could hurt ethanol sales and reduce farmers' incomes. That's the WISBusiness.com stock report. Go to WISBusiness.com for more on these and other stories. And now, here's Tom Still with his Inside Wisconsin commentary. You could practically hear the panic buttons being punched last month when the news broke that Wisconsin lost 12,500 private sector jobs in July. That's the biggest monthly loss since the depths of the recession. Is the double dip recession underway? Is Governor Scott Walker's goal of creating 250,000 jobs in four years at risk? Is the ancient Mayan prophecy of worldwide doom in 2012 coming true? The jury's still out on that 5,000-year-old Mayan calendar, but it's okay to relax a bit when it comes to digesting month-to-month -month employment statistics. They're notoriously lumpy for reasons ranging from seasonal hiring patterns to weather, from fuel prices to political uncertainty. Placing too much stock in one month's jobless figures, up or down, can be an unending roller coaster ride. What really matters in economic development is a long-haul strategy which translates to policies, actions, and management of trends in ways that produce sustainable prosperity over time. Peaks and valleys tend to even out. Wisconsin's job creation stats from June are Exhibit A. The state added 14,800 jobs two months ago, the biggest monthly increase of the year. It continued a 2011 trend in which Wisconsin was slowly but surely adding jobs. With a workforce of roughly 2.8 million people, monthly changes in the thousands or tens of thousands are destined to happen. The trick is building or attracting more jobs over time, especially in a dynamic economy driven by forces far beyond Wisconsin's control. Some indicators already point to the fact that Wisconsin may be getting ahead of the job creation curve rather than lagging it. The innovation economy. While many emerging firms continue to languish for lack of early stage capital, Wisconsin's tech sector still forges ahead. In the past month alone, biofuels companies such as Virant and Madison, energy control and storage companies such as ZBB Energy Corp, and life science companies such as Promega have all shown progress. Net new business creation. Wisconsin has bounced along the bottom for net new business formation in recent years. Using federal statistics, the economic modeling firm MZ concluded Wisconsin ranked between 34th and 50th among the 50 states between 2006 and 2009. In 2010, Wisconsin bounced back to 17th, but it was a down year nationally, so that meant only 267 new companies. Still, let's hope that trend continues in 2011. Durable goods manufacturing. That sector added 2,000 jobs in July and continues to be a harbinger of Wisconsin's competitiveness in a global marketplace. Exports continue to be a salvation for the Wisconsin economy in manufacturing, agriculture, and beyond. How others see Wisconsin. Recent surveys and rankings may be changing how others view Wisconsin, as well as how we perceive ourselves. Chief executives, site selection, Forbes, and Barron's magazines, as well as the Gallup poll, have all given Wisconsin credit of late. 
Wisconsin's economy exists less in a month-to-month -month world than a constantly swirling cauldron of global, national, and state trends. If you really want to know how Wisconsin's economy fared in 2011, wait for a full year's worth of data in 2012. Unless, of course, those Mayans were right and there is no 2012. Thanks, Tom. I'll be right back with Mike Wicker of Team Companies, a Midwest developer of data centers. White Hirschbeck Dudek represents companies at all stages of development and in a wide range of industries to navigate the legal challenges of regional, national, and global growth. At WHD, every stage takes center stage. I'm back with Mike Wicker of Team Companies, which owns data centers in Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Iowa. Thanks for joining us, Mike. Thanks for having me, Liz. Team Companies is now part of the TDS Telecom family. How does that enhance your data center business? Well, Liz, it's great to be part of a company like TDS that has a long history and a strong corporate culture built around providing exceptional customer service and supporting critical applications for companies. Um, as a Fortune 500 company with strong financials, TDS has the capital resources that are required to build, operate, and maintain critical facilities like data centers. And there's a strong complement between data center services and traditional telco services. So data centers provide a foundational building block for other services like high-speed transport, managed network services, hosted voice, and cloud computing solutions. Why are data centers important, and who should consider building or leasing space in them? Well, businesses today are increasingly reliant on technology, data storage, and other applications that can help them run their businesses more effectively. So data centers are a critical component of that technology infrastructure. Just about every company that we talk to today has a long-term data center strategy in place that could involve adding capacity to their existing facilities, building a new data center from scratch, or leasing space in one of our facilities. And I think the factors that drive companies to look at leasing facility in one of our existing data centers primarily revolve around higher levels of security, greater reliability, and the ability to be in compliance with federal regulations. What is the market potential for data centers in Wisconsin, and why is the state a good place to build them? Wisconsin's a great place for data centers, and the market potential is increasing at an unprecedented pace. We're currently in the process of tripling the size of our current data center to meet growing customer demand. I think it's a combination of factors. Uh, one of the unique aspects of Wisconsin is that the upper Midwest is statistically one of the safest places in the United States to have a data center. We don't have to worry about hurricanes, earthquakes, rolling blackouts. We have a very stable power grid and less expensive cost of power than you might find in other regions that have larger urban areas. Also, we can take advantage of the cooler northern climate to help us run our facilities more efficiently and keep those systems cool. And then finally, the Madison area, and Fishburg in particular, has a tremendous pool of highly skilled, well-educated workforce and information, technologies, information technology professionals in particular. Thanks, Mike, and thank you for watching this edition of WISBusiness.com, the show. The show is produced by the Wisconsin Technology Council and WISBusiness.com and brought to you by Grant Thornton, White Hirschbeck Dudek, MG&E, and the University of Wisconsin at Milwaukee. I'm Liz Schramm. See you next time. Thank <laughs> you.